It's just connecting that. Hello, Miss hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? I am good. Let me just turn this up. Okay. Yeah, how are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I heard you mention um, the lockdown and the makeup. I was just like, yep, yeah, go ahead. Because every weekend I try to put on some lashes. And that's my weekend thing now. So <laughs> <laughs> I see your nails are done, though. I see your nails are well, they're my natural nails. I've just, oh. I've just painted them. Yeah, they go kind of long. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I like. This is what I like. Yes. <laughs> no, but thank you so much for coming on here. We're so excited to speak with you and just to hear your perspective. So we're just going to kick off. We're going to kick off. You know, this show is about race. It's about looking at different people's heritage and just providing that space for honest dialogue. So the first question that we want to explore with you tonight is, you know, what is your heritage? What is your heritage and experience of the world? So um, I'm majority half, I would say half Jamaican and mm. half Irish. Okay. And I'm from the UK. Okay. And so half Irish, half Jamaican. Those are two very strong cultures in themselves, right? So like, how, how, have you, <laughs> how have you navigated that? What's your experience in the world? Like, how do you experience the world that we live in? Uh, uh, so, uh, <laughs> there's, there's quite a few things um, that actually come to mind in regards to this. And it's funny, if we're talking about experiences as a dual heritage person, um, mm. I think... If I'm honest, the first time I actually realized people were different from me in regards to seeing color, mm. um, when I was in year seven in secondary school. Mm. Um, and I don't know if that's a late thing to think about and realize, but when I, when, when I came over to secondary school, I noticed that in, in primary school and junior school, everybody's everybody's friends and, you know, yeah. it's been a lady as well. So it's just everyone's just one big happy family is my experience from that. But then secondary school was different because then I started noticing different people. Well, people that looked similar stayed together. So I started mm. noticing, okay, um, all the Chinese stay together. All of the blacks stay together. The whites stay together. The Indians stay together. And it's like, everybody's kind of integrated, yes, but mm -hmm. kind of sticking to their own. And I only feel, realized that that was happening and it was like, oh, wait, they're all different. And that's kind of when I realized, oh, we're not all, it's not all the same. Something's different. Mm -hmm. So that's when I kind of realized, okay, cool. But I didn't really take it on board too much to think too deeply on it. So then when I was in the first couple of years, um, I was very close with quite a few Indian girls and I used to get along, we get along still, like a house on fire, like I'm good with all of them, we're good, we're fine. But then I realised in around year nine, I started graduating mm. to the black girls because mm. they, we had more stuff in common. We would, we would laugh about the same stuff, like mm -hmm. our food that we had to eat, um, getting our hair detangled. <laughs> and how we styling our hair because I used to get my hair like K rolled and all those kind of fancy stuff. I used to do mm. all the so it's like I kind of gravitated in the latter part of secondary school with more black friends because I could relate to them a lot more because if there was just more to talk about. Um someone I said because I joined your school. Uh, <laughs> major impact entertainment. <laughs> There's, um, but growing up, it's been quite interesting because mm. within that group of friends that I was in, um, I did get told I should perm my hair. Mm. I, I should perm my hair because then my hair will be long and straight and nice. Now, when I was in school, my sister's laughing, Kate, everyone. <laughs> when I was in school, um, we, my mum didn't get us straighteners. We didn't have straighteners growing up because mm -hmm. my mum doesn't really... She, she, I think she used to use them, but she wouldn't use them in our hair. So then, mm. oh, I'm going to drop something now. So <laughs> what, we, what I started to do, because... So I, I kept on getting told, like, you should perm your hair. It's going to be... It'll be longer and it'll be nice and it'll be straight and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm like, mm, okay, cool. Went back to my mum and I was like... Mom, can I perm my hair? If I perm my hair, my hair's going to be from here to there, to down to my back. Like, 
I wanted to pat him my hand. And then my mom was just like, no. And I was like, <laughs> so I wasn't I just ready. That. Listen, because at the end of the day, like my parents don't play. Like if my mom tells mm. me no, it, it means no. It, it means, means no. It means no. Yes. You, know, so you can't have that <laughs> skinny crack. Sorry, no, ma'am. <laughs> but then, um, what I started to do, and somebody mentioned this on the mixed race talk that I was listening in on the other day, um, mm. well, a couple months ago. And they said something about an iron. And in school, I, because I wanted my hair straight, but I didn't mm -hmm. know how to get it straight because all I knew about was perm, that well, I wasn't allowed to get my hair perm. Mm. Then I was just like, well, the iron straightens out creases in clothes. So mm. I, yeah, literally my, me and my sister, I, I, I know I used to do it. I think, I don't think she really did it too much. But um, I used to literally get the iron, get a towel, and my friends wow. told me how to do it. Literally, with the wow. and a towel, and iron my hair straight. That's how I got my hair straight. Because wow. I had to perm my hair. So then, that's what we used to do. Because as a, as a teenager growing up, mm. it's a bit like, we didn't, I didn't grow up around straightness until my mum caught me doing it one time. <laughs> got to <do> that. <laughs> Rachel said, I remember it. <laughs> And um, then she was just like, okay, if you want to straighten your hair, then you can, I will get you some straightness. Mm. But she was still like, I don't know why you're doing that foolishness anyway, because your hair's fine as it is. So then it's just like, okay, so then that, that was interesting. Another mm. thing um, was that, okay, if we're moving on to a little bit more, um, more recent years. So I used to work on a cruise line um, in the Caribbean and there's not a lot of um, of course on a cruise ship unless you're paying the spa those big prices you better find somewhere where they duck to get your hair done <laughs> and you better hold something <laughs> to do your hair because the water on the ship has got a lot of chlorine in it so you mm. can't it damages your hair dries out your hair and your skin okay <laughs> <laughs> you have to get that lotion <laughs> E45, you know. Listen, the way how it used to dry out, yeah, like I must have washed my hair twice on the ship, and I was like, yeah, this can't, this can't run because it leaves your hair really brittle. Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. um, I did find somebody who got recommended to me for my hair type. So I was mm -hmm. like, cool, no worries, fine. Um, but one time she wasn't available when I when I had time off to get my hair done, so I had to find somebody else. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I have to ask people especially if it's a mainly white salon and it was a white area, I have to ask, like, have you done my hair type before? Because I'm going to have to, I've already prepared myself to educate you on, like, don't be surprised if X, Y, and Z happens when you do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So um, I asked the lady, she's like, yep, I've done hair like yours many times before, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, before I've even tried to explain anything just for my peace of mind she's like no 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 i've got you i can do it it's fine i said okay i came in and then i was having a brazilian blowout okay mm. so i got my hair so she washed my hair fine cool no pause when she was putting the water on my head she got surprised that my hair went from it was kind of like kind of like this but a little bit straighter mm. um, but she was surprised that when the water went on it it went really curly she didn't expect that to happen. And so that door red because her response showed me that she didn't, she didn't know. She wasn't prepared for what was about to come when she started blow drying it. So mm. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, she's like, oh, you, you, you've got a lot of hair. I said, you're like, oh, you're oh, tired, you, tired. But you, you've done this hair before though. But yet, you know, you have to be nice because mm -hmm. she's got her hands in your head. Okay. I was just like, okay, yeah, no, that's fine. It's fine. And then um, when it came to blowing it out, mm. she she basically told me at the end, like she didn't realize that when you put hot air onto my hair, my hair's gonna go to a big bush. It's gonna go to a big afro, like it's mm. massive, it go big. She didn't have a clue that was gonna happen either. So number one, Bosey Bosey was ready to like, <laughs> yeah, I can do your hair, I can do this big with our chest, you know? And I Whole was like, chest. okay, so first of all, my hair went really curly, <laughs> as it does when I wash it. And mm -hmm. then when she was blow drying it, she didn't realise that it was going to go poof. And then after that, she's doing the Brazilian blowout. She was going to have to straighten it out with the blowout. 
the amount of products, yeah, that is not meant for my hair, that she put in my hair, my hair was just, like, drinking it like it was a camel, like it was out at the farm <laughs> and didn't have the most parched, yeah, <laughs> like, parched. So, she kept on applying, she's like, I wasn't ready for, you, your hair's really thirsty, yeah. <laughs> That's wow. Stop up. And I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, is it, is it all right though? She's like, oh yeah, no worries, no worries. And I, in my head, I'm like, <laughs> I ain't paying you. I, I, I tried, I tried <laughs> to say something, and I think the moral of, I mean, in the end, she did a great job. She was, re- I actually commend her for continuing and not giving mm-hmm. up because mm-hmm. it, because she wasn't ready for the she, all of what I was trying to communicate to her. She assumed that she knew what she was doing, and she didn't mm-hmm. want to. That brings me on to my next point is that people assume and want to tell you as a mixed race person how you're supposed to feel, where you Mm -hmm. are supposed to fit in. People want to tell you what you're supposed to think, what Mm -hmm. side you're supposed to be on. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 a really, because the majority of the time, it's just like, yeah, we have an opinion. It's, uh, It's very different to what white people would like discuss and it's very di- it's kind of different to what black people would discuss it's yeah. somewhere in the it kind of yeah. takes both sides and it's just like it's a different it's a completely different perspective in some cases and i say that because um mm. so i know that the mixed race experience is different it globally so a couple and what, more, what would you what would you say that is what would you say that is because i've heard a lot of people say that but i haven't heard them articulate what is that? Ex- what is the experience? Oh, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give another, I'm gonna give another example that's gonna answer this as well. Mm. So, when I was doing, I'm not gonna completely, um, I'm not gonna call out too much. But um, when I was at, so I did my undergrad and my masters in two different universities. Mm. When I was doing one in one of those um, courses, um, I wanted to join like a like a mixed kind of black community where I where I felt that I fit in kind of sort of because mm. in college all my, the majority of my friends were black. Um, of course, I got my Indians, my Vietnamese, Chinese, and the rest. Um, but the majority of my friends were the ones that I made in school, and then we just mm. we just kind of gelled and kept it like that, which was fine. Um, but when I went to university, you know, it's, it, it was, a di- I was like, okay, cool, let me try it. And it's like, I think it's like a, a BAME Facebook group. Okay. Uh, so, and basically it was like, a, not a fraternity, what do you call it when um, you've got a group of people, like a community. Like, Is like it a, like, a, like an ACS? Yeah, yes. That's exactly what it was. Okay. <laughs> so it was the ACS group. Mm. And, um... I remember I clicked it to join. So I'm like, oh my gosh, amazing. They do, I can help with um, events and stuff like that. And what, like, mm. whatever I can support, I am going to support, promote, whatever I can do. And um, so I hit the request button. And with that, mm. I, um, I didn't get a response for like a couple of days. And I spoke to one of my friends and she's mm. mixed, but she's like brown skin. So you wouldn't mm. look at her and assume that she's got a dual heritage because she okay. looks like a, a black girl just with loads of curls and mm. uh, she, she i spoke to her about it i was just like but they've, they've posted recently so i was a little bit confused it wasn't a completely closed group some of the posts you could see mm. i was like okay cool i'm gonna give them a week because maybe they're busy and so they must have um I, I left it a week and then i told my friend again and i was just like they haven't accepted it yet and she was just mm-hmm. like, you know what that could be? And I was like, no, nah, don't do that. I don't think it is. So then I said to her, and she does not attend this university. She did not attend it. I said to her, you put your request in and see, let's see what happens. Bear in yeah. mind, she doesn't, she doesn't attend it. They yeah. accepted her like within 15 minutes. Wow. Like, ah, okay. That mm-hmm. was really awkward because then it was kind of like, you don't, you don't, it's like some people will accept you in the black mm. community and some people won't. And then mm-hmm. it's like when they don't accept you, feeling kind of really, really like, oh, this is really awkward. Like, okay, I don't feel like I belong here. Mm. 
because I don't belong here. So then you have to really think about it. And that's where a lot of us are kind of, and I can speak for me and a couple others because I've got a couple others that I've spoke to about this and they've mm. had the same kind of feelings like it's it's some where some people will um, accept you. That's wonderful. We'll do whatever we can. Like we're part with, this is our community. This is part of our community, yeah. our family. Do you understand? Yeah. So yeah. When they don't accept you, it's like, okay, you've pushed me out. You don't want me in there. Mm. So I will stay over here. And then you kind of just left kind of, it's really, it's just really awkward. So the experience that different people have w will vary depending on mm. the types of groups that they associate themselves with and how they are accepted in those groups. Mm. And that, wow. That, that is really, really powerful because to see that, you know, as a mixed race woman, you know, joining an ACS Afro-Caribbean society, this is across all universities. Mm. And then to see someone who's more black passing, um, you know, be accepted within 15 minutes, that really does speak volumes. And oftentimes, you know, we look at white people and say, oh, they're not accepting of mixed race or black, but actually within the black community, they're doing the exact same thing it's it's yeah and it can get really mm. awkward I mean, from a mixed race perspective that was that was my experience quite mm. a few times. i've had people turn around to me and say oh you um you you think you're black what you're not black and it's just wow. like but like okay cool but leave, like just leave me alone like it's just leave me to be whatever i'm like whatever i'm feeling comfortable to do but what mm. if you're gonna tell me that why are you then pushing me out again like i didn't ask you to do to be anything i'm not asking for your approval i'm not mm. i'm not asking for your approval of acceptance of who i am if yeah. you don't want to accept me as being mixed race that's okay that's up to you though i don't have to accept your thoughts and your opinions you can mm. have everybody has their own well i don't have i just don't have to accept the foolishness that comes with it and another thing mm. was um when i must have joined like a it wasn't like a pro black it was a pro black group in the sense of it was positive um like uh, content that was being shared so i um, somebody invited me one of my friends invited me to that uh, group and i was like oh amazing some positive stuff within the black community mm. great i'm here for it excited again and then when i actually looked at the post there was a lot of like white bashing mm. you know people talking about you know white devils and all of this malarkey and i'm I was really just sitting there like, why am I in this group? Because this, again, um, this is not for me. Like, what is this? You understand? Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And so, obviously, there are loads of different types of groups. But I was just like, it just, where are we going with this? I had to come out because I was like, yeah, what, I'm not doing that. But then, again, it's like where some people will accept you. Some people mm. want to look twice on you because you are mixed with white. So you've got uh -huh. some um, extremists yeah uh, won't they won't bother with you because you've got white mixed in you so they disregard you completely and this yeah. is not something that's new this is something that's been ongoing but we don't really talk outwardly about it because it's not really it's not really a great conversational topic it's mm. it is uncomfortable and it's not nice yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah so i hope that kind of answers your question a little bit with it does of the examples that i've given because Hmm. It really yeah. does because it shows that, as I said at the beginning of the show, oftentimes you can assume um, that because someone's of dual heritage, they're able to, you know, operate in both in both communities, be accepted in both communities, mm -hmm. and to see, um, you know, you you've mentioned a lot about a word about fitting in, you know, mm -hmm. where do I where do we fit? And it just makes, as someone who's confident like yourself and you're able to navigate, which is going to be my next question, you know, there might be other people within the community, within a mixed race community, yeah. who could be feeling rejected or, or as, as you said, like, where do, where do you fit in? And as a community, we need to ensure that, as I said, this voice is heard. And I'm sure there's other community groups on Instagram. I saw you tag a few today um, yeah. who are specifically catering to mix heritage so we can talk about at the at that at the end because yeah. you know that might be really good for some viewers who want to find you know that community where you can just breathe and be yourself which brings me to that my next question um 
racial injustice. Um, we've seen, oh, we've got a question here. I'll come back from, Rachel says, as mixed race, do you agree with the statement of us being mixed race white or mixed race black? Like, do you feel like we identify with one side more than the other? Ooh. Do you know what? Let's jump into that question. I'll come to my question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, yeah. So it's definitely something where I'm going to bring in biology a little bit because whichever parent you're closest to, you're going to be more familiar with whatever their culture is, however they mm. Whatever music they are constantly listening to, the way how they do things, whichever parent you are closest to, you'll be more inclined to be that, like, you'll be more familiar with that cultural perspective. Mm. So that depends on if you've got a white mum, a black mum, like, it, it just, or a black mum, like, dad, it doesn't matter, like, what, it's whoever you're closest to, you'd kind of, you'd, you're more familiar with that. I wow. think that's a simple explanation to answer it to be fair and um, that's literally in my opinion that's what that is um, so could you have different siblings then identifying differently depends on who they're close with how do you mean so like say for instance mm, you've got three mixed race brothers and sisters in a family and two are more um identify more with the mum who's black and then one might identify more with the dad who's white, for instance. Could, mm -hmm. within that mixed race unit, there be different affiliations or identifying differently within a family structure? I would, that's a very good question. Um, from growing up and with some of my mixed race friends, mm. it's, 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 it's whatever you, because individually we're all made different. We all think differently. We have our own perspectives, our preferences and everything. So... Mm when you're growing up with the same kind of, you know, the same upbringing with your parents, um, it depends, it, you just gravitate to what you, what, you, what you prefer. So I think that in itself is a preference. Mm. Um, I have got, I've got quite a few sisters um, and even my younger brother as well. And so with us, we've all, we've, we've all kind of been brought up We've all been brought up the same, same mm. models, same uh, way of thinking, same kind of like mainly the moral standpoint, but we are all very different in mm. certain regard. Okay. Um, but for the main part, we all have the same kind of understanding of who we are mm. uh, as humans. And, we, and we've always been taught like, you know, there's never been a kind of awkwardness in regards to who we are it's just mm. the majority of it is like just be a respectful person have integrity all that good stuff that your parents instill yeah. um and then whatever your preferences after that is what your preference is like i i really enjoy drum and bass liquid drum and bass now my mom don't listen to drum and bass <laughs> but <laughs> my dad probably in his heydays he likes the sound of drum and bass mm. and so that's something that i connect with um when it comes to music, I can listen to Irish music and I, I really, I actually connect with it. Mm. Um, I've got a few, I've got a few artists that I listen to and I really like them. Hi! Yeah, well, I've got a few people at the same time. Different people might not appreciate that, but I can connect to that. But mm. at the same time, I have like, I'm very sure I've got an inner yardie. <laughs> <laughs> I love my reggae and <laughs> you know I enjoy it and I completely enjoy both cultures both heritages both both everything like I really enjoy it mm. another thing as well is like um, just a, just an odd fact if I'm really comfortable with somebody then I will very comfortably speak a lot of patois when mm. I'm ready okay? <laughs> I, I can, like no problem but I will sound like I'm not from the UK, <laughs> but then it's just like I would never, I would never speak Patois in front of people that I don't know because then it's just like I don't want you looking at me like, oh, what are you trying to do? You know, it can get mm. really awkward around certain people. There's actually a song that I did, and I did, I, I just wanted to have fun with the song, and yeah. I did some of it in Patois. And when I said that was the most fun song I ever did, oh my <laughs> gosh, it was amazing. <laughs> 
it was amazing and I was just like yeah but I was really nervous in really sharing that song because I was like I don't want people to turn around and be like why is she trying to speak Patois you're not black that whole mm. stigma. but then I was just like you know what I am who I am um, I'm a mixture if that offends you that is your business keep that energy over there though because I'm not interested mm. I'm mm. Con- I'm comfortable in my I, with my Irish side, and I'm comfortable with my Jamaican side, and yeah. I love both of them. Okay, <laughs> and that will be all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> amazing, oh, amazing. You know, thank you for sharing that. You know, you really articulated that well, um, and in a way that our viewers can really understand. Which leads me to our second question. So, what with all that's going on with Black Lives Matter, um, you know, a global racial injustice. How have you had to navigate that space as a mixed race um, woman with mixed heritage? How has that been? So it's been very interesting um, because when everything started kicking up with the George George Floyd murder a couple of weeks mm. ago, when that all kicked off, like it it just the everything that happened happened so fast. Mm. It was a lot for everybody to grasp because globally, that that was like the pinnacle of 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 the all of now. It's still the pinnacle of what's happened in twenty twenty yeah. from the pandemic. So it's just like at first I was very kind of like observant and very cautious, mm-hmm. and like, but but at the same time it was like I, I'm tired. Like I've never had to defend my 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 white side. My, I've never had to defend being Irish, mm. I, but it's, it's different on the other side. And so when all of that stuff was happening, I, I, feel, this, I feel the hurt that my cousins feel, that any mm-hmm. black feel. I would, I would confidently say I can empathize, and I, but I feel it though. Like I feel it. I feel mm-hmm. it too, because that's my family too. Yeah. And it's just like, the way how it was, it was definitely draining and it was very, it was very awkward because it's just like, okay, I don't want to say something out of line that somebody who's full black turns around and just like, be quiet. You don't understand what we go through. I'm not trying to um, take on or try to kind of like pretend that there are certain things that I go through but as a black person, I'm not black, but there's certain things that black people go through that I probably, I, what well, I haven't been through and that I may never go through. So I can't mm-hmm. sit here and be like, I, like, I, I can't, like, it's, mm. <sighs> I'm trying to find the words to say it, but it's just like, without kind of saying like, you know, I, I do, I feel the pain because yeah. it hurts me, but I don't, I can only empathize and mm. I, and it's just, it's like, when other people, it's just, ugh, it's very, ugh. let me try and gather my thoughts, because like, my mind's just going everywhere, um, yeah. yeah, so at first, I was quite observant to how everybody was reacting, mm. I was observant because I saw the pain, and I felt the pain, and I did not know what to do, mm. and it was like, I don't, I don't know whether I should be angry. I don't know whether I should give cuddles to all, to all my, like, my black friends, my black family. Like, I don't know what to do because mm-hmm. all I'm seeing is a lot of pain and it hurts. It mm-hmm. hurts. And I may not look like you, but the pain, and it might be for getting emotional, but mm-hmm. the pain is still there and it's hard. Mm-hmm. And it's just like when certain people will... And you kind of get a little bit reserved because you you don't want to say something out of line and affect somebody in a negative way that they turn around and push you back out like your mixed race go away you don't know about it. you don't know about this and that and it's just like I don't I didn't know what to do for a minute so I was like I just I want to embrace I want to hug I I'm hurting like you are but I don't look like you and some of you don't even like me because I'm mixed with white so it was really mm-hmm. but in the end I was just like you know what. Forget all that. Like it's not. It's not even about a, a, a skin tone thing. In my mind, I'm thinking. You know what? Racism in itself is a disease. It's a. It's a mental defamation. Like 
you cannot be how can you sleep at night thinking that i mean how it's not even logical you can't act like if you if i say for example if i had two children if, if there were two children in front of me mm. one was white skinned one was um, black skinned i'm not going to treat them differently They're ch like i'm not going to treat them differently so as an adult if you can look at somebody and make a decision that someone's not worthy because they don't look like you what what kind of human are you like let, let's mm. like where are we going with this like that doesn't even make sense so then it's just it's just annoying frustrating it's just irritating and um after being a little bit observant tr trying to just gather my thoughts and really understand like how can how can i show my love and support but not come across as if i'm trying to you know attach myself to the pain that you feel that i don't necessarily feel i'm not trying to do that i'm trying to support you however i can whatever i can so in the end um then I was just like, okay, cool. And I was doing stuff, speaking to people, doing stuff online, offline, to educate, help mm. the, the white part, counterpart, to, to show support for my... Oh, my goodness. That's inter that is an interesting... I'm actually interested in what you just said there about um, being that kind of middle space to help your white counterparts, you know, understand the black experience. How has that been? Um, <laughs> I... I've had some interesting conversations and I'm not going to lie. Um, it's been, it's been interesting because some people, you can tell that they're very comfortable in their privilege. Very comfortable. Ooh. Very comfortable to a point where they will support you, you know, in some kind of way, but it's not enough. Hmm. Um, <laughs> and some people, um, some of my white friends, um, they have been incredibly supportive and they're speaking out yeah. and, um, and that's, that's, a, that's, a, I would say it's a, it's a brave thing to do when the rest of your friends don't feel the same. They don't feel the same as they should do because mm. you should be taking care of humanity. If you see injustice, you should be putting your foot down and be like, hey, listen, stop that. That's not right. Don't do that. So I've mm. seen do that and I commend them for it because you know what? They, they've got more, there's, I wouldn't say there's more pressure, but there's more people looking at them that will put them in like the acceptance. A lot of people aren't speaking up in certain communities because they don't want to be looked on in a different way. Mm. But, so you get the brave ones that are just like, you know what? No, what's wrong is wrong. But you've got other people that don't want to change their mindset because they benefit from their privilege. So why are they? Why do they want to change? Why should I mm. change the way I think and how I do things? Because then, like, I, it doesn't affect me. Yeah, yeah. It affects everybody. It mm. literally affects everybody. Nobody can sit here and be like, oh, um, you know, that doesn't affect me. A lot of people are in denial because they like being in ignorance. They like their ignorance because their ignorance allows them to be, continue to, to, mm -hmm. do whatever, to do whatever they want and to feel however they want. That's the ignorance in it. Wow. When you take that out, like, if you try to gain understanding, like, try to gain understanding. Mm. Like, try. So it's been very interesting. Um, I've had some people genuinely, they don't know what to do. They're, just, they're like, Annie, like, I genuinely don't know what to do. Like, I want to support. I want to show my support. But I'm scared. Mm. Yeah, because I don't want to get attacked. I'm white. I'm scared. And I'm like, I had, I had to really... When my friend sat down and told me that, I had to sit down and be like, wow. Like, I didn't even think of that part. She says she's, she's scared. She doesn't want to be condemned. We all know that um, it's, it's, very, it's a very sensitive subject and there's a lot of pain there's a yeah. lot of trauma there's a lot of everything insert everything negative here there's a lot of that there you understand mm -hmm. so you can't just you can't just approach the situation without thinking about what you're doing you mm. can't text in and posting things and you haven't thought about why you are if you're happy with what you're posting you really need to think before you're doing things and that's why i appreciated her being so open with me she mm. was because she didn't want to get attacked when I say attack, I'm not saying physically, I'm talking about like online, if she's yeah. or whatnot, in whatever group, whatever. So, that's, that a lot of people have kind of got the discussions of, you know what, no, like, I'm scared because I don't, I don't want to get attacked, I don't know what to do. 
what you should do is read upon it, educate yourself, understand, understand, understand the struggle a little bit more yeah. than you do right now. Understand mm -hmm. what systematic oppression is. Because when you understand that, then you understand, okay, pause, hold on a second. That's what's going on. Mm. Because a lot of, yeah, just, it's, it's very interesting. Because that is interesting because on Twitter, um, a lot, what you've said about you, what you're basically saying is do the work, right? Like, yeah, yeah, do, do the work and find the books, find the reading, just like, yeah, you know, someone says Google is free. Um, Listen, Google is free. <laughs> Everybody's got Wi Fi and internet. Hello, you pay your bills on time, you're, you're on your phone sitting on IG posting, but you don't want to find out about how you can be helpful and how you can be resourceful and how mm. you can other humans when they need your help what kind yeah. of human do you please come on let's do better and we find books about every other thing you know i've seen so much people find books even about animals and you know people love their animals that's fine but <laughs> this is human life right and um i think you've nailed it about you know do the work and not always asking those who have faced trauma to then tell you about their trauma and then do the work for you so i think i think it's powerful what you're saying and, you know, we can talk more about that um, in the promotion of, you know, books that you can look into yes. um, so that you can really do the work. Because I know some people love to read. So yes. there's books out there. There's amazing books. Oh, wow. We've got Miss Africa um, GB online with us. And um, we've got some mixed race communities here with us as well. You know, thank you so much for tuning <laughs> in. Thank you for tuning in. So as you know, you know, this is not a Christian show. This is a show for everybody, but Christians speak on this platform. Yeah. So what do you think the church, um, hi, Fat Lum from Belgium. Thank you so much for coming because I know you'll cost me if I don't shout you out. So hello, welcome. <laughs> um, do you think the church has a role to play in standing against injustice? And as I said, guys, this is not about trying to convert or proselytize. Like this is not a Christian show, but I'm a Christian. And we speak about Christian topics. So please feel free to engage. But yeah, do you think that the church has anything to say in this? And is it saying anything? <clears throat> well. One sec. <laughs> no. So. <laughs> no, but um, I'm serious now. Of course. Mm. Uh, of course. I think that any institution, um, re even regardless of any religion, it's at the end of the day it's about love and support for humanity um in regards to the church i i would say it would be nice for them for quite a few um to be a, to be more vocal about it um mm. i think people are trying to be too uh corporately correct and mm. really accurate that they're not addressing the situations as they are now is not the time to be um, wait, what do you call it when you're um, tiptoeing around things just yeah. to keep everybody happy? Nobody is happy right now. <laughs> this is not the time to be like you know skipping along and trying to avoid things. No, you need to hit. You need to make sure that if you're gonna talk, you talk on the relevant subjects and be direct. Be very mm. direct. Call it out for what it is. I'm not saying that you should blame people. It's not a blame thing. But yeah. it's, if you see an injustice, we get taught so many times, and it's in, in multiple religions, that mm. if you see something wrong, morally, you're morally obligated to yes. do something. Wrong is wrong. If you see something wrong, you should stand by the people who are being persecuted. If they are innocent, you stand by them, and you say, you know what? I am here for you. I love you. I support you. I will protect you. I am here. How can I help? How can I support you? Here I am. Mm. You understand? And so when people don't speak up, and they're, they're too corporate and they don't actually address it like this is something that everybody is affected by and mm -hmm. if you are in for example if you are part of a black church or a black uh, religion or wh whatever but it's like if your congregation yeah and their youth are in their beds at night and this this, this ugh, it's gonna get to me because my heart's in it Mm. But it's like you, you, you know what's going on in the world. You understand? You know mm. what's going on. So you can see that there's a lot of hurt. You can mm -hmm. see that there is a lot of hurt over years and years and years. And this is also known as trauma. You understand? Yeah. Trauma. Yeah. 
So then you've got, and, and again, and this, this is why so many people have reacted so strongly to what's recently happened because people are fed up, they're done with it. Like, why is this still going on? Why is this still happening? Why are we still in this situation? What is going on? So then at the end of the day, it's just like, okay, cool. You need to make sure that you're addressing people within your congregation. You mm. need to, that you're showing your support. You need to make sure that you're showing your love, extending your support. Literally, that's literally it. Just talk up. That's it. Mm. Because there's so many people hurting and they, they need that support. But yeah. if you don't extend your hands and you don't say, you know what? No, we stand with you. We support you. We love you. I get it. I understand. I've been there too. Like, I'm here. How can we help you? Mm. It's about supporting each other. Like, regardless of your religious um, beliefs or whatnot, it's about supporting and loving one another at the end of the day. We all share one planet. Yeah. And if we can't just, like, let's just love a little bit more. Let's support a little bit more. Do, why, why do we, okay, my last point on this before mm. I let you continue. But my thing is, in majority of religions, we are taught to be strong, to be brave, yes, to yes. be courageous, to be all these amazing things. But then when it comes down to it, and we need those brave people, and we need those people in leadership, and those people, just everybody, all kinds of people, mm. to be those things that we, we talk about so often, oh, and they, yes. they're not so, and they don't do that, and there's a delay, it's like, Okay, I'm not too yeah. sure. Like I, but I need your support. But mm. I know you're acting like nothing's going on. Well, you're not addressing it properly. Address it properly. Talk, yeah. talk it, talk the things. Them, you understand? Yeah. <laughs> I'm only for two piece, but stop me out because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true what you're saying about talking. You know, um, Sean, I was on the line tonight, and last week you had Professor Robert Beckford who said he would rather, um, you know, particularly in the Pentecostal church, we have yes. some fiery preachers, you know, they'll get on that podium and call down fire from heaven. <laughs> and he said, I would rather um, fire on the streets, standing up against injustice, um, than fire on the pulpit and then be a on the street so listen no one one little thing <laughs> <laughs> you know that saying preaching to the choir don't don't preach to people don't talk to people about things they already they're already aware of go mm. and teach other people how they can best support how they educate the others it's the others that we need the support from so it's just yeah. like if i'm talking it's all good having all these discussions when we're feeling this everyone's feeling some kind of way but it's just like, if I'm not doing my little bit and going out of my way to, I'm, I'm breathing. If I'm not going out of my way to like um, speak to somebody that I know might be uncomfortable with it, then what is my purpose? There's no point in me talking to you about your pain and my pain. We're mm. feeling the same thing. <laughs> mm. Mm. But you know, at the same time, it's just like, okay, cool. Let me take this same energy and, and, and appropriately let the others know how they can help and, and engage in that communication. Have those, mm. have those conversations. And mm. they're very awkward. I can tell you, they're so, it's very awkward. Very, very awkward. But I would prefer to be uncomfortable and, mm. and supported and being moral in my stance mm. rather than being comfortable and saying nothing because that, that will burn a different way. <laughs> yeah. And I'm saying that. Sorry, no. no. That's, that's powerful. That's powerful. And, you know, thank you for sharing that. And as we come into the last 10 minutes, you know, we have a question. And that is, do mixed-raised people experience privilege? And are they asked to choose a side? What, what would be your response to, you know, maybe a mixed-raised girl or boy that feels that pressure? What, what would you advise them? What would you say as we wrap up? And then, you know, we'll open the floor. Bear in mind, we've got five minutes now. So, guys, if you have any pressing questions, this is your <laughs> moment. This is your time. <laughs> but, yeah, over to you, Anne-Marie. So, what I would say to all of my mixed, dual heritage, amazing folks out there, embrace every part of you. Do not mm. worry. And do not focus on the things that people want to tell you. Do not focus and take in. Anybody can tell you anything, okay? I've had so many people, and I'm sure you've had, as mixed race people, had so many people tell you, 
who you're supposed to be, how you're mm. supposed to act, what you're supposed to like, what you're allowed to do, what you're not mm. allowed to do. Don't worry about what they are saying because what they are saying is their opinion. They can have it. They can keep it over there. You just make sure that you continue to love yourself, embrace all parts of you, and just love everybody else and just keep it moving. There's too much negative things happening for us to focus on things and have people interject what their insecurities into us. Mm. What when people say help is their insecurities. They can't sleep at night. Let leave them to do what they're doing. Leave them alone. Don't worry about that. Love on yourself. Support each other. Love each other. Love everyone. Period. Love and support. Mm. Love yourself though. <laughs> Say it louder for the people in oh. the boxes. <laughs> Embrace it, and if people can't accept you for who you think, for who you are, and who you are comfortable with being, that's okay. Leave them alone; it don't matter. There's mm. love for the bills. Someone it's said your opinion don't, don't pay the bills. bills. It's okay. People can have mm. their opinion, but that's over there. That's all. That's all. That's over there. Just continue wow. to embrace yourself. Your difference is your strength, and that is amazing. Mm. Okay. That's a bar. That's a bar. Your difference is your strength. And I think that's powerful because, you know, I have dual heritage cousins and I know growing up, um, you know, you're always almost asked to pick a side. It's like, no, you're both. And that is what it is. And that will be all. Just a quick one before it laps off. So mm. um, when people, I've had people tell me that I'm black and tell me mm. that you, you're not mixed race, you're black. Why do you count yourself as mixed race? My thing is, I'm not, not, I'm not going to embrace one and neglect the other. I am mm. I honor both of my heritages. And if mm. I had more, I would honor more. I honor all parts of me. I'm not going to mm. neglect one because you said I should. I'm not doing yeah. that. I am who I am. I am mixed. And I love all of me and I embrace all of me. That's that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's powerful, guys. And, you know, if there's people on the line who do have that dual heritage, that is a very powerful statement that Miss Amory has said. So, you know... I'm going to put that hashtag up after because I think even if you're not mixed race, that is a hashtag to live by. Embrace you. Mm -hmm. Embrace you. And finally, is there any Instagram pages or communities that people can plug into um, for the mixed race community, specifically during this time um, in identity, self-worth and all those things? Is there anyone you'd like to shout out? Oh my gosh, there's so many. You should have done that when I've got like <laughs> seven. Um, there's the mixed girl group. There's um, Afro German girl. There's um, mixed present. There's mm. there's quite a few. What I'll do is if you post this somewhere, I will send you all the um, handles um, so that you can retweet. You can have that there as well. There's there's, there's a few, and they're amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so guys, we'll we'll share that. We'll share that because at the end of the day, we want people to be able to access resources where oh people could. <laughs> 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 Lavina <laughs> said people will catch these hands and we, we know she ain't lying. Okay. So um these These hands, praying Sorry. hands. Amen. No, but thank you so, so, so much for coming on and you know, sharing your experience because as I said, within this whole debate, um we're not, we don't want to be silenced, but equally, we don't want to silence others and tell them what their experience should be. So yeah. it's been amazing. Thank you. So guys, drop some fire, drop some love for Miss Anne-Marie <laughs> in the chat box. Okay. Like